Hermeneutics is the science of interpreting the scripture, attempting at discovering the intended meaning by examining the text and context and its application to the situation of the times. Exegesis is the biblical critical analysis intending to interpret the text of the document. The word hermeneutics derived from the Greek name Hermes. In Greek mythology, Hermes often brought messages from Zeus. In Acts 14, the crowd at Lystra referred to Barnabas and Paul as Zeus and Hermes. Words have different meanings when used in different contexts. Grammar, logics, and literary devices can influence what the authors intended to say. The Bible as literature has three parts, the author, the message, and the audience. Hermeneutics involves the process of discerning what the message is, who sent it, and to whom it is addressed. For believers, the ultimate author and source of the Bible is God. The human author is not equally important, but is not insignificant either. The sacred author retained his personality, opinions, preferences, tests, background, education, intelligence, and experience during his writing. Matthew and John wrote their gospel accounts using first-hand experience, while Mark and Luke were never apostles, only disciples. Their accounts are second-hand and collaborated by Peter for Mark and the Virgin Mary for Luke. When reading the Bible, it is crucial to know the intended audience of God's Word. When you read the letter to Corinthians, for example, you need to understand that Paul was writing to a Christian community which had deteriorated and turned away from God. Accurate translation of the original words is crucial. However, the reader must consider both the content as well as the context. The literal, allegorical, moral, and anagogical senses need to be determined to interpret the true meaning. Sense is the meaning words have by themselves and when placed in context with other words to form phrases and sentences. The Hebrew language uses hyperbole to express the superlative. Jesus uses a figure of speech in Matthew 5 when he says, If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. The obvious exaggeration of physically removing your own eyeball is meant to make a point and not promote an act of self-mutilation. The literal sense is the meaning of the word. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The literal sense of the words shepherd and sheep are needed to be understood so that the figurative meaning of the words become clear. Literal sense can be further divided into figurative and proper speech. The various figures of speech are metaphor, ironies, idioms, hyperboles, euphemisms, allegory, analogy, and so on. Proper speech is always meant to be understood literally. When Jesus says that his followers must hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters in Luke 14. This figure of speech means that a believer must love God more than even his own family. The literal interpretation, on the other hand, would be to despise and hate family, which would make no sense since one of the Ten Commandments is to love and honor one's parents. The Bible is composed of different types of literature, including poetry, drama, epic, narrative, and the parables. 
There are prayers, poems, hymns, genealogies, dialogue, sermons, and epistles. Knowing the type of the passage you are reading will help you to accurately interpret the text. When Jesus gives interpretations to the commandments, Bible scholars say he is giving a fuller meaning to the original literal text. Hence, murder and adultery are now given a deeper and fuller interpretation to also mean the desire and the willingness to do these deeds. In the parable about the weeds and the wheat, Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemies came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go out and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until they harvest. And at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and then tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. In this passage, the reader applies the literal sense to understand the weeds and weeds. The next step is to apply symbolic and metaphorical meaning to the passage. The author's intended audience is of his own time period and often one of the persecution. So he writes to encourage to affirm while also using symbolism, metaphor, and figurative language. Apocalyptic writings usually place the events in terms of a cosmic battle between good and evil. The books of Daniel and Revelation are examples of this. The book of Daniel wanted to encourage the Jews who were being tormented by the Seleucid king Antiochus IV. By placing the scene in the past at the Babylonian court of Nebuchadnezzar, the book of Revelation wanted to encourage the Christians being attacked by Emperor Domitian by placing the time and place into the far future. The use of allegory and metaphor do not mean that the prophecies contained in the apocalyptic books are not real. Apocalyptic writing contains messages for both the then and present as well as for the later time. Jesus says in Matthew 7, Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. First look at this passage and understand the literal meaning of the text. Then look at the context to see the application of the meaning to the situation. Christians see this passage as a reminder that, all too often, humans squander the truly invaluable and precious gifts God has given them, such as life, faith, family, in place of materialistic things. The truth is, there are various ambiguous or difficult passages in the Bible, so one needs to consult church teaching authority in order to understand them better. The sources for this can be in the explanation of the creeds or the catechism, since often they address these verses. Please go to YouTube Retirementality channel, playlist Bible studies for the complete series of these introductory materials for Bible studies.